Chapter 13 is going to discuss something called conic sections. Conic sections are uh, a set of figures that were first envisioned by the Greeks a couple thousand years ago. And it's, it's always amusing to me to, to think about some Greek mathematician, you know, five or six hundred years BC, you know, sitting around and saying to himself, ha, I got it. What would happen if we took two cones and put them tip to tip and then sliced them with a plane? What would the shapes be? What would their intersections be? Well, turns out those intersections are very inter interesting intersections. If you slice parallel to the sides of one of the cones, then you're going to get a shape of a parabola. If you slice perpendicular to the axis of the cones, then you're going to get a circle. If that circle is slightly inclined, you'll get a special oval type shape called an ellipse. And if you slice parallel to the axis of symmetry but removed from the center, you get two parabolas that face away from each other called a hyperbola. These are interesting and important shapes. We're going to start by studying the circle and the parabola in section 13.1. And I'm going to show you a few applications of the parabola. So if you learn some of the applications, you might be able to pick up uh, a couple extra credit points on the final exam, you know, telling me where you learned something interesting, uh, yes, assuming that it is interesting. So the parabola looks like this. And what you see here is a little bit more detailed than what we're going to cover. The rest of this is stuff that you would cover in a college algebra class. But a parabola has a unique point in it called a focus. And that focus allows you to use um, some nice properties of the parabola to do things like build a satellite dish or build a telescope. So how does that work? Well, when you have, say, radio waves coming into a telescope, they bounce off the reflector here, this parabolic-shaped reflector, and they get concentrated at that one point. And that point is your focus. That's where you put the receiver, and then you uh, capture a bigger signal that way. Uh, angry birds, there you go. Flight paths uh, of a thrown object, launched object, tend to be parabolic. The Hubble Space Telescope, this is kind of cool. Um, our billion dollar, or actually multi billion dollar by now, telescope. And uh, this guy is Andrew Feustel. What's interesting about him is he's an OCC graduate. So when we say you can get anywhere from here, we mean it, right? Cool. Where else can you use a parabola? You can put a parabolic shape mirror on the roof of a building, capture the sunlight, and bring it down into the interior of a building with fiber optic cables so you can have sunlight inside of a building, which would be really cool. Uh, searchlights, even your car headlights use the shape of a parabola. They don't put the, the light source at the focus because they want it to spread out around the road, not just be one dot. Um, let's see. Monday Night Football would not be the same if you couldn't hear all the grunts and groans. Um, this is a, a solar collector at Delta College, and uh, the amount of power it gets uh, know, looks fairly parabolic to me. This one's kind of cool. This is on my bucket list. So whenever I get an extra $5,000, I'm going to do it. It's called the Vomit Comet how they train your astronauts. They uh, fly this plane in a parabolic shaped arc and near the top of the arc for you know 20 or 40 seconds or so you experience weightlessness. So it's really cool. I mean I'd love to do it. This is a great YouTube videos about this. Uh, does anyone notice anything interesting about the bottom left picture? Somebody brought a cat up there which <laughs> just really got to mess with his mind. So, yeah, poor little titty cat. All right, putty tat, right? All right, so let's actually spend some time now working with um, circles first and then parabolas. So, let's see. Which one did I? I passed out the circle. Good. Bless you. So, how would we come up with the equation of... A pro, of, of a circle. Well, let's think here. Um, circles, you know, a good definition of a circle would be 
the set of points that are all equidistant from one point. So, for instance, let's just draw ourselves a nice little circle. And that was easy. No, no, I do that freehand. <laughs> yeah, I use the easy button. Uh, so let's put a circle here, and I give the center coordinates of H and K. What's this distance called from the center to the outside edge here? That's the radius. So that's the radius. And the outside edge, let me give the coordinates of that point some general coordinates of X and Y. We don't know what they are, just X and Y. But here we have specific coordinates of H and K. Well, here's some good review for you. We have a formula that allows us to compute the distance between two points. So the distance between those two points, that distance is r. It's the square root of something. Does anyone remember what it's the square root of? Well, let me write it in terms of d, which is what you might be familiar with. d is something minus something, something else minus something. Sounding familiar? You should know this come a week from today. Thank you. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's the formula for the distance between two points. If I replace these with these points, then I could write x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. Certainly amongst the formulas that you should know for your final exam, would be this one right here, your distance formula. As far as the equation of a circle is concerned, though, this would be kind of an ugly equation to have to deal with. So what could I do here? Well, I could take both sides and square it. Why would I choose to square it? What, what advantage do you think that's going to give me? Yeah, thank you. It cancels out the radicals. So I get r squared equals x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And let's think about what that represents. That represents a circle. What's the radius of my circle? Look at the drawing, not at the equation. What's the radius? Yeah, and in this case, it's r. Circle of radius r, center at h and k. So there we go. We actually proved something. That's kind of cool. We don't often do that in this course. That's another formula that you should have memorized for the exam. So there's two freebies there for you. Let's use that. Let's see if we can't reverse engineer that. One thing that I want to point out about our equation here is that on the one side, I've got an r squared, but the radius was r. So if you're looking at uh, a number like 16 on the left-hand side of this equation, then the radius is going to be 4. You have to take the square root of this, or you can write it as 4 squared and just say, okay, well, then, then it's a 4. Let's start with problem number 20 here. So x minus 1 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 9. It's kind of up to you. You could rewrite this as being 3 squared if you like. I'm not sure I'd choose to do that or not. It's, again, up to you. But let's take a look at these two terms. We want to figure out what's the center. What I suggest is that when you're looking at these things, you figure out what makes the squared terms equal to zero. Kind of like what we were doing when we found the vertex of a parabola, make the square term zero. So what makes the square term zero here? 
plus 1. And then what else? For y, negative 4. So that's our center. How about the radius? What's the radius of this thing? Gil? 3. Yeah, good. So you want to take the square root of that and get 3. Or you can think of it as 3 squared, and then in this case, the radius is just the 3. All right, thank you. So let's graph this then. So I want to go 1 and then down to negative 4. So that's my center. So let me zoom out a little bit. As far as the rest of this is concerned, what I suggest is that you draw what I'll call the four points of the compass. So let's figure out where these points are going to be, kind of north, south, east, and west of the center. So if I go up three, one, two, three, that's going to put a point here. To the right three, put a point here. To the left three, and then down three. Now this is the unfortunate part about live video is that I actually have to do this live and figure out, <laughs> try not to embarrass myself. But you know, all I'm looking for is something that looks reasonable. I'm not looking for something super perfect. I'd probably do that on a computer or graphing calculator if I wanted something that was really super clean. All that I'm looking for is that you connect these in roughly a circle and just don't connect them like dots of a diamond like a you know a kindergartner would. So there's our circle. The important thing that you should get here is how to find the center and the radius. And we'll play this problem backwards as well. We'll start out with a circle and then, um, like I said, we'll work it backwards. Are we okay with problem 20? Thumbs up there. All right, good. Let's try problem number 18 then. So a little bit different work here. Um, same same kind of question though. That is, where, what's the center and what's the radius? So why don't you try and figure that out for this one, and then I'm going to call on somebody. Laura, what's the center, please? Good, negative 4 and 0. And someone for the radius, Mitchell? Can you simplify the square root of 1 for me? Thank you. So, square root of 1. Yeah, square root of 1, yeah, I have issues with that one. A lot of people just leave it at square root of 1. So I'm suggesting that you simplify it. Um, if you don't, yeah, who knows what's going to happen. But thank you. So 1 there. Uh, there's our center. Now our graph is actually a lot bigger than we need. That's okay. I did it so that it would fit in nice and neatly here. So try and draw the graph here. Same way we did the other one. So up one, down one, right one, and left one. I don't know. Glad I don't have to play basketball or something this other round. <laughs> okay. This actually looks pretty good. Problem 18 and 20, doing all right on those? Let's play this game in a little bit of a different direction. What if we had problem like number 22? Now, there's a typo in problem number 22. This should be x squared plus y squared 
equals 10. Now I've drawn the graph here for you, but let's see if we can't make sense of it in a different way. What's the center here? Zero, zero. What about the radius? What's, how much? No, the, the right hand side should be a 10. Right hand side should be a 10. So what's the radius? Square root of 10, yeah. It would, how come it's not the minus? You can't have a negative distance, all right? So radius equals the square root of 10. Can someone give me an intelligent answer without their calculator as to roughly what I would expect if I calculated the square root of 10? All right, sounds good. 3.1 something, all right? It's going to be a little bit bigger than 3, right? And that's what you should see when you're looking at your graph here, is that, okay, that's, a, that's not exactly at 3. So this would be square root of 10 and 0. What would this coordinate be down here? Or over here, to the left? Negative square root of 10 and 0. And then 0 and negative square root of 10. And finally, 0 and the square root of 10. So, okay. It, our circles don't always have to be perfect. That's fine. Let's do one kind of reverse of what we've done. We started out with the equation, and we found the center and radius. What if they gave you the center and radius and asked for the equation, like problem number 28? Now, that equation's already graphed. It starts with uh, the point 5, negative 4, and a radius of 6. All right, so we're looking good there. So let's see if we can't work this backwards. So remember, it's our equation of a circle is going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So they've given us pretty much everything we need here. Now you can do this in one or two steps. It's kind of up to you. What's this first term going to look like? Thank you. x minus 5 squared plus y plus 4. Now, it's up to you. I mean, you could do it in two steps, but I think most of us do it in one. y minus negative 4 is really y plus 4. So y plus 4 squared. What should I put on the right-hand side? 36. Beautiful. Hopefully some easy points for you. Um, some problems like this arise in the exam. Do you want to do another one like 28? Let's do 26 then. So problem number 26. Let's do 26-ish. I want to center at negative 5 and 3 and a radius equal to 2. So I just changed that. I made that a negative just to make it a little bit more interesting for you. Krista? Good. 
and I'd accept four or two squared either way. All right, looking good on those. So there's two problems left that I want to cover. Are you okay going both directions on the, these circle problems? Giving you the center, find the equation, or you have the equation, find the center. So there's one last thing that we need to cover, and it's problems like 36 and 38. If you were to graph problem 36, you'd actually see a circle. Does it look like a circle as it stands there? Let's check it out. Let's check it out on decimals. X squared plus Y squared plus 6X. Thank you. Plus 6X minus 4Y negative 12. All right, so itty bitty circle, right? Center at negative 3 and 2. But let's see if we can't figure that out in another way. You're not going to have access to decimals on the final exam. Sorry. So what else can we do? What you have to do is you have to complete the square. So let's do that. X squared plus 6X plus something plus y squared minus 4y plus something equals negative 12 plus something plus something. So here's, again, some good review for your final exam. Process of completing the square, something we did a long time ago, relatively speaking. Do you remember how to do that? How do I complete the square on that term there? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well done. Wouldn't say it any different. So you take half of the middle coefficient. So half of 6 is 3. And then 3 squared is 9. So the 9 is what you need to help complete the square. All right. So I'll write x squared plus... 6x plus 9. Let's put a 9 in like that. Do the same thing for the y's. So for the y's, take half of the middle coefficient. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So that 4 is going to help us complete the square. So plus y squared minus 4y plus 4. Now there's something else I have to do. I can't just add 9 and add 4 to the left-hand side. What else do I have to do to kind of keep things in balance? Uh, actually... What I would suggest to keep things in balance is if you add 9 to the left-hand side, you also add 9 to the right-hand side. So I'm going to add 9 here and add 9 here. On the left-hand side, oh, thank you, 4, yes. On the left-hand side, this is now a perfect square. Norm, what do I what do I square to get this? On the right hand side I get a one. But what do I square to get that? Yeah. This number here is always going to be this number here, x plus 3. And likewise, that number here is going to be down here. What's the rest of this here? All right. So x plus 3, y minus 2, both of those squared. Someone tell me what the center and radius is.
negative 3 and 2. The radius is the square root of 1. I was looking for some recognition. <laughs> square root of 1, which is 1. <laughs> All right. But do you see this process? The process of completing the square, we're going to be doing it again when we work on ellipses. But I was going to give you a chance to do problem 38 uh, as a practice problem before we get there. Okay. Why don't you try problem 38? Same exact kind of thing here. I'll walk around, try and help out. If you have some questions, please let me know. Beautiful. Okay, so let's see here. We take x squared plus 8x plus something plus y squared plus 2y plus something equals negative 13. We need to figure out what those somethings are. So the first step is take half of the middle coefficient. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So... We'll, we can add 16 to both sides. Half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Let's rewrite this. x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus y squared plus 2y plus 1 equals negative 13 plus, plus uh, 16 plus 1. So... 16 here, 1 here, I'll squeeze the 1 in here, and 16 in here. doesn't have to be in that same order. Just make sure you add it to both sides. The left-hand side becomes x plus 4 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 4. So what's the center? 
negative 4, negative 1, and the radius is 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Yay. So that's it. I mean, we've, we've exhausted the types of problems I can give you on circles. We're looking okay with those. This is also a good warm-up for the stuff that we're going to do with ellipses. It's going to make our work in section 13.2 a lot easier. That opens us up now to work on parabolas. Any, any other thoughts there before we move into parabolas? And okay.